Okay, just got home from work. Uh, I'm gonna tear out the DC compressor out of this thing, a little cocaine compressor. Uh, you can hear how much it uh, rattles, how loud it is. Um, I had to put that compressor in because of my other one failing. Um, probably can't hear me all that well right now, and I'm gonna shut it off in a second, and hopefully you can hear the noise that the thing's gonna make. So. So normally when a compressor shuts off uh, with a cap tube like this, um, at least a reciprocating compressor, the pressure equalizes through the cap tube. And uh, what happens with this one is it will start to squeal and whistle. I don't know how much you can hear that. It's leaking past, uh, back through the, uh, I think just past the veins of the rotary compressor. I don't know if a rotary like this has a check valve on the discharge or not. Uh, I can see how it wouldn't, uh, especially something small and simple like this. Kind of hear it rattling. I don't know if it's actually pushing the vein, uh, pushing the motor around, uh, but it's definitely leaking through it. And uh, over the course of the next few minutes, it'll make some funny noises. So um, I don't know if this is because uh, it's wore out, uh, because it's low on oil. Um, the thing only takes about 50 milliliters of oil, something like that. Um, the propane tends to carry oil a lot, so there could have been some oil carried out of it. Propane also tends to thin out the oil or the viscosity. Uh, so you know, with a rotary compressor with, with veins, um, that uh, uh, good lubrication I think is probably pretty important. I mean, as it is with any compressor. Um, now the reason I mention this is um, I have concerns uh, if it does have some kind of a check valve or something that should be uh, shut that maybe during the actual uh, run it's leaking back through. So uh, as the compressor discharges uh, high pressure gas into the uh, compressor or into the condenser it's leaking back through leading to inefficient compression. Um, for that reason and, and, and some others, I, I want to retire this thing, um, at least for now. Uh, it's, it's not really appropriate for, for this thing. For one, it's loud. Um, it's not in a shell, sitting on springs, quiet. It doesn't have a muffler like a, a, a normal shelled compressor. Um, it, it rattles all the metal and stuff here. Um, there's a couple of, uh, um, um, couple of speeds at which it, uh, it tends to really resonate a lot, so I just kind of turned it down a little bit so it doesn't rattle so much, but it's really annoying, um, and I don't think it's particularly efficient either. Um, I don't really have hard data to support that, just based on my observations of run times and things. Now, the glycol that's in the tank right now, um, I changed it, and I actually strengthened it a little bit uh, right before my other compressor died. So it's not... Uh, it's, a, it's kind of an apples to oranges comparison because this glycol is a little bit stronger and the hope was I was going to run it at a lower temperature um, to thoroughly freeze it and to thoroughly, more thoroughly thaw it in, in each cycle. There's starting to whistle. Anyway, um, I tried a few different thermostat settings in order to get this thing to run half decent and keep this thing cool. And uh, the one I ended up settling on is, I think it's somewhere around like a 18 to 20 to 28 or 18 to 30. Um, and I get something around maybe a 45% duty cycle. Whereas uh, with previous compressors, I get somewhere around one third, about you know, 30, 35%, something like that. Um, and they're also much shorter cycles too. Uh, I kind of narrow the temperature range and the temperature range is a little bit higher than the range I was using before, even though I have a, a, a lower freezing point glycol mix. Um, so, you know, I'd like to run down to, you know, 12 to 25 Fahrenheit, something like that. <clears throat> but um, this compressor seems to have a lot of trouble getting down to low temperatures. Just getting it down to 16 or 15 degrees uh, takes quite a while. And um, uh, even when I do, um, you know, I can get some longer off cycles, but the, uh, the long, extremely long run cycle doesn't really... Uh, uh, doesn't do me any good because it ends up running longer than it's actually off. So, um, you know, this type of cycling here where it's probably going through, um, you know, this is a four hour period here. So it's running once basically for every two hours. Um, uh, 
So anyway, um, I just thought I would do a quick video and just explain why I'm, I'm retiring it. And uh, you know, I, I don't really have a problem with these little compressors. You know, and if it was new and it hasn't gone through some of the abuse that I've put it through, um, or I designed this thing specifically for that little compressor. Um, you know, I might be singing a different tune and I would pull it out and check the oil charge and all kinds of things like that. But um, it's not really necessary for what this machine's gonna be. Um, I, I, I need a shell type like that. So I actually have a small shell type, uh, 120 volt, uh, came out of a mini fridge um, and it should be pretty appropriate for this. And it'll be a lot quieter and stuff. So I'm curious to see uh, if I can get some better performance over here. So. Um, not real, that's about all I have to say. So, um, you know, the next video will probably be in the next, you know, few days. And uh, once I get a little bit more data with the new compressor and this uh, stronger glycol mix. So, thanks for watching.